Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Nellie and Ruth Designs. Oh, I will say it is a very snowy day here. I woke up to a foot of snow, and that was at 7 a.m. It is Saturday. I'm making the Marguerite Miller the day before. Uh, and it is still snowing like the Dickens. Um, it's not supposed to stop snowing until later today into the evening. So we could end up with another 18 inches, which is not, it is not fun. It's the week before Easter. Uh, you know, every year in March, we get dumped on. I think I showed you in my last video uh, a photo or a couple photos off of my phone where we received a good 30 plus inches you know, 20 inches one week, and then, you know, within that week, we received another 12 to 15 inches. It's, it's just mind-boggling. I don't understand it. Nobody does. Everybody is really depressed. I talked to my girlfriend this morning. She got up. She goes, I'm eating cake for breakfast. I need comfort food. She says, this is just ridiculous, and she sent me a picture of her house. She's three and a half hours from me, and, um, it's just very disheartening. So, welcome winter. Um, yeah, I don't know. But this morning, um, I want to thank everybody for joining in. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'd love to have you subscribe. Uh, for all of my uh, gals over at my members on Patreon, thank you. Um, I've received a couple gals that um, are new over there. So I thank you very much. And for all my um, subscribers who makes this channel possible, um, blessings to you all and warm hugs on this very cold wintry day. So I have all of my, this is going to be a little different Marguerite Miller this week. I am not working with my Daphne's Diary. Um, I had only, you know, I got a, a text from Debbie over at My Vagabond Style, and her text was, week 15 is hard, <laughs> or something along those lines. The only thing I had found in my Daphne's diary was a repeating pattern found in nature. I found butterflies, and I'm like, what am I going to do with butterflies? I could not find anything else. I'm getting so I really don't like uh, collaging with prompts, and I'm going to try not to sneeze. <coughs> oh. oh, excuse me, and that didn't work out. Um, yeah, I'm after doing my bird collage and my Rolodex collaging, and my crossword puzzle collaging each week, I am getting to the point where I really do not like um, prompts at all. So this week, I have decided that I am going to, because it's Saturday, and Saturday is my, is my scrapbooking day, or at least my scrapbooking morning, because this afternoon I'm going to make a big batch of homemade chocolate chip cookies, because when it snows, we bake here in the North Country. Um, so I'm going to scrap this morning, do my workout, bake my cookies, make a bowl of popcorn, and sit down and watch some TV later. But I wanted to do a scrapbook page. I'm not, like I said, I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything with the Daphne Diaries because I couldn't pull anything, okay? So that idea was shot right out the window. And these are the prompts for this week. A repeating pattern found in nature. Ledger paper, which I do not have. I'm subbing that out for something stenciled. A part of a product manual or instruction guide. Thread or a piece of fabric, which I have both. And then a quote. And then we will redo, we'll revisit these in the end. So let me show you what I've pulled. I've pulled my blue uh, faded jeans. Um, ink by Ranger. I have a stencil here, which I found the other day in my drawer, and I'm really anxious to use it. It is Kaiser Craft Mixed Medium 
media used with gel mediums, texture paste, sprays, mist, ink, chalk, acrylic paint. Um, and I must have purchased it at Hobby Lobby at some point. And I just think this is a real fun one. And I'm going to be using this section here, and I'll tell you why. I also have, I might want to do some stamping. I have these wonderful, um, this is Craft Consortium, Wildflower Meadow Special Edition. I have these um, dragonfly stamps. And I definitely want to use the dragonfly on my collage, scrapbooking page collage today. Because where these where this these photos are, where my father is, there are always dragonflies. And I may even use a little bit of this, and I'll explain why I'm going to add some flowers there. I have my fabric, again, flowers, wild flowers. This beautiful fabric my daughter-in-law brought back for me from um, Romania when she went a couple years ago. And I haven't used a lot of it. I love it. I'm going to make a journal and cover this. Um, this is going to be the outside cover. And she brought me that in yellow. And she brought me that in pink. So I want to make her a journal as well um, with this. And I've already started stitching. We'll do a little bit of stitching. And then I have this piece. This is the end piece. I'm going to use that. Um, I have my repeating pattern here which are these fish, these wonderful, wonderful, they look like trout. And to me, a repeating pattern on a fish are the scales. And if it's a rainbow trout, I don't know if you've ever seen a rainbow trout up close, but my dad used to trout fish all the time. He did as a young man all the way up until he couldn't handle the rocks anymore. He'd, he'd have the big waders, he'd have the felt bottoms. You know, the, the hip waders are like um, coveralls, and then you have a felt bottom that go onto your boot. He took a couple bad falls as he got older, his stability, and because he would get right out. He was a fly fisherman, and a um, he would do bait casting. He would tie his own flies, which I have some beautiful, beautiful flies that he's tied. And that was his hobby. He would sit at the kitchen table at night, and I have all of his, um, I have all his get up and his vice and all of his feathers and his, um, his hooks and eyes, all of that. I've, I've got it in the cellar, uh, kept safe away. Um, but he would make beautiful flies, tie flies, and then he would go trout fishing. And rainbow trout, they have got the most beautiful colors and patterns on the side of their body and rainbow trouts are all you know there's browns there's rainbow but they all have the same pattern so um, this was the first thing that I thought of after the butterflies and I was going through my photos and I wanted to do a fishing theme uh, this here I do not have ledger paper but this is like a ledger card I'm going to be using that um, the back side of this is an, a nice, again, a repeat pattern. Um, it looks like a, a wall or bricks or whatever. I'm going to be using that. I already have that cut down. I have a quote, a wonderful quote, fishing quote. And this is by Ernest Hemingway. And I'm going to have to redo this because I want to put Ernest Hemingway down here. So I'm going to redo that. Um, and then... We'll come back, but it says fishing is a discipline in the equality of men, for all men are equal before fish. And again, that's Ernest Hemingway, so I've I got to finish that. I was a little anxious to get that printed out. Plus, I was talking to my girlfriend on the phone, so I wasn't really paying attention. And I had Biddy Petty live to the left of me. I was watching, I've been watching her live all morning. Um, so that's what I do when I gather my items. I talk on the phone, I watch people's videos. So I have a lot going on. I have this beautiful piece of vellum that I wanted to use and do an overlay on the fish to, to try to mute this a little bit. Um, and the butterflies. Lots of times, you know, we see butterflies in the woods and such. So I have that. Then here I have my 
a part of a product manual or instruction guide. Now this came when I scrapped my dad with his um, fishing gear and fish and such. I have this wonderful fisherman's handbook and I will choose different things out of here. Um, a lot of times I will take these smaller. It doesn't matter if my dad has a suit on or he's doing something else in a photo, but if I want to make a card or a tag or something, I will grab a photo from the fisherman's hand guide and I will make a tag for him. I will collage a tag or I will do something because fishing was a huge part of his life. Um, he would go with my Uncle Al, my mom's brother. My brother um, was a huge fisherman, and they would take off on Saturdays, and they would go up to the, he'd say the Snook Hill, or he'd go up to the Osable River up near Lake Placid, which is probably hour and a half from, well, two hours from his house, hour and a half from mine. And he would spend all day on the river. Um, fly fishing and real fishing and he would come home and his crawl always had um, bullhead in it, rainbow trout and when I was little I had one of those blow up swimming pools and when my dad, I always thought it was cute because I, I must have been like three or four, I would be if it was a hot day, he, he would come home he always had a bouquet of wildflowers for my mom that's why I'm incorporating a flower here um, in his uh, scrapbooking page. He'd always come home with a, a really pretty, and it wouldn't be yarrow or anything like that. He would come home with a really pretty bouquet of wildflowers for my mom. He would come home with milkweed. He would, especially in the spring, because the milkweeds are coming up, and he would come home with a big shopping bag, of a brown paper bag of milkweed. And we would have the milkweed. He would pluck all of the the small uh, leaves. And the leaves really weren't any bigger than this rabbit because they were more tender. And he would pluck. He would sit on the back porch and he would pluck the milkweeds. My mom would clean them. And then he would boil. we would boil up a big pot of milkweed with... Um, Oh, gosh, uh, salt. Um, oh, gosh, I can't think. I just had a brain fart. Um, but it's a chunk of fat, and it's it's salt. It's salty, and they would throw that in there. And then we would have milkweed with, it's kind of like eating spinach, with butter and salt and pepper. And then I would go out, um, getting back, when my dad came up, I'm telling you, he had the wildflowers and everything else. Well, he would also throw the fish. Sometimes he would take a, a bullhead and he would throw it in my sw little swimming pool area that I would be in. And then, of course, you know, I I would have to get out. And um, But sometimes he would throw the fish in there just to keep them cold until... You know, then he, until he fixed them, prepared them. Then he would cover a picnic table full of newspapers, and I'd sit on top of the picnic table, and he, I would watch him um, prepare the fish. So that's how I learned how to, you know, I don't want to say gut a fish, but that's the term, how to gut a fish. And he would go over the inside with me, and as he was doing things, and it never, never disturbed me. I just found it fascinating. Um, but we would have a nice trout and milkweed dinner that night. So um, the dragonflies are because there's always dragonflies skimming the water for bugs and things like that. So I wanted to incorporate that, and I wanted to incorporate the flower. And then I'm going to incorporate this bait casting because this is a vintage picture of my dad, and he was a young man at the time. And I believe he was out in the state of Washington when he was vis visiting his father. Um, this is a break uh, that he had in the service. Look at how th skinny. He had the smallest little waist. But he would fish whenever he was out in the state of Washington. So I have that beautiful picture of him with his hat on. And then this here is in our home. And this is his crawl with um, his rainbow trout. And he would lay them out on the floor. 
um, spread them out, take a picture, and then I'm sure my mother told him to get those slimy fish up off of the floor in the kitchen. Um, so I wanted to incorporate these two photos into his book today. So the first thing I'm going to do, I will fix this afterwards. I'll put that over there. Is I wanted to mute this paper here because it's very bright. And if you are a beginner scrapbooking, take the scrapbooker, take this into consideration. Um, you know, if you would just put your photo here like that, it's going to kind of get lost. So I wanted to mute this because I think it's absolutely beautiful with vellum over this. So I cut this down just a tad. As you can see, I'm leaving a, um, a more prominent border around here. And I'm going to affix this here. I'm not going to glue it down. I'm going to give you a little tip how to hold your vellum down. Sometimes what I find, you can use art glitter glue if you do a line down here, and it doesn't show. If you use a tape runner or um, little tape squares or whatever, you are gonna see the tape through these. I do not like to see my tape or any type of glue. So I'm going to, I'll show you how I'm gonna attach these. But first I think um, I started, and I can bring this down a little bit. while I'm stitching here. Um, I wanted to define, let's just turn this here a little, get, get this here. I wanted to define the outline uh, of this flower a little bit more. I didn't want to just leave it plain like this. So I am just stitching around here like this. And I, and I don't need a hoop or anything. I can pretty much keep it um, keep it flat and it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to uncoil my and when you have something like this you can just decide how far down you want to go. I did not go all the way in on this because these are um, pretty much outlined with the darker ink or whatever. So I'm just doing around the outside here. So I hope everyone is doing well. I hope you're all having really good weather. Um, one of my subscribers, she thought she was so funny. Ha, ha, ha. She, she sent me a message. I love it when my, when my subscribers joke with me. Um, and we just, we can have fun and banter back and forth. But I think I had mentioned something about, I'm just going to pull this a little bit tighter, something about, you know, we're supposed to be getting... Um, you know, snow and such. And she commented on, hold on a minute, I can't talk and do this at the same time. She commented on my video and she said, uh, you have fun shoveling all that snow. She says, I'm, I'm heading to Texas to visit my daughter. So I told him, I said, oh, you are a funny girl. But I hope that you're, I always want neat, you know, when I think of East, oops, when I think of Easter, I always think of, you know, nice weather, the kids can be outside if you have little ones, um, you know, gathering their Easter eggs, um, enjoying, you know, the day, a beautiful spring day. But when Easter, and I also think of Easter 
as being in April. I mean, I look back at some of my pictures, Easter pictures, um, at my mom and dad's house. I actually have a photo of my dad and I fly. We used to practice uh, fly fishing in the backyard. And I have a picture of my dad and I, and I believe it was around Easter. It was a beautiful day. And we're out there. He's helping me, you know, get the wrist action down. Um, and we are having some fun with that. And, you know, I have pictures of my, my boys gathering eggs. Um, I obviously can't sew and talk either at the same time. Um, in the spring, outside, they, they have their little pants on and some nice sweaters. Come on, Barbie. Um, but last year, I mean, we, we got hit with all of that snow and we couldn't, we couldn't be outside. So it's just kind of disheartening to say the least. All right. And that's as far as I'm going to go with this. All right. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanted to have a little something. Um, to outline it just a tad. And I'm just going to feed this through like this. I'm not going to knot it. Because it's not like a... Okay. Alright, so that is good just like that. It just gives a little bit of an outline. What I could do as well, I could do a few French knots in here. Um, and that will just give it a little bit more texture. Come on. I feel like all thumbs and fingers today. So I'll just do a few little... And maybe I can change up the colors as well in here. I'll do some... This is when a hoop, an embroidery hoop, does come in handy. Because <laughs> then you can get nice nice tight knots but like I said this is do a little and yesterday um, so yesterday was like I said I'm making this video on Saturday. So yesterday was Friday and I had to go I had to go into my husband's office for a nine o'clock meeting. We have a new assistant controller starting. I went in Thursday and introduced myself. She's a sweet little thing. Cute little girl. She's got a little baby that's 18 months old and the baby's name is Magnolia, which I think it's so cute. Um, so I went in and I introduced myself and I explained to her that, you know, I'm not in the office a lot. It's not my job to be here. And I explained to her how, you know, the first 14 years I, I was vice president of the company and I had a very big role, um, and, you know, I did all the payroll, I did all the billing, I did all the collecting 
I took care of everything. And then, you know, as time went on, we could afford to hire, you know, people to help out. So I just told her, I go, Isabel, I go, now, if you see me coming in the office, I said, you'll know that there's either a problem, <laughs> um, and I've been asked to come in to help resolve something or whatever. Um, and I said, I don't want you to get nervous when you, when you see me. I said, it's the only time you'll see me in here. I said, if there is a problem. And I said, there's a problem. And seeing that you're new, I said, we're having, as you know, we're having a meeting Friday morning at 9 a.m. And I didn't want to come in and blindside you and, you know, think, oh, my goodness, is it me? Am I in trouble? I just started. What's, what's going on? So I said, so my son, I actually had, I don't like to talk to an employee um, by myself. You know, I, I want someone else in the room because I don't want anything misconstrued. I, unfortunately, I'm old school and I have a hard time following all of the new rules and regulations. Um that HR in the state has put out. So I have to be very careful and I need somebody there to either kick me under the table if I start to say something or, you know, I, I you just, you have to be careful these days. Even my, I wanted to go to one meeting and my accountant told me, he says, stay the hell home. He says, you, you could just make things worse. Um, but yesterday, I, I, we, I got into work. I got there about 29 because I had some other, I had to mail a uh, brochure, a catalog, a product guide out to one of the gals that's participating in the bird challenge. So I went in early to grab a book. And all of a sudden, my husband comes in, and he comes in, he was talking to someone outside and the person outside it's a different company but they rent space from us in our office and he comes walking in and I'm like what's going on and Scott's like well you know Mike took a little fall and I go he fell well my husband tripped up we have a really steep set of concrete steps coming into the building we have a, a handicapped entrance. We have we have three different entrances, but for some reason, my husband chooses to. Um, I'm just going to put a few little light colors amongst here. He chooses to go up these back steps, and um, he misjudged. He misjudged his step. His toe stubbed, he stubbed his toe against the instep or whatever you want to call it, the, I don't know what you call it, I don't know, it's called a breaker step or whatever. And he went down like a ton of bricks and he gnarled up his hands pretty good. But he went sliding what did I do with my needle? Here it is. He went sliding face first, and he turned his head so he wouldn't get his face. And it looks, it looked, his head, he, he lost big gobs of hair. Um, and I, I told my husband, I go, oh my gosh, Mike, I go, this is, this is like when they used to scalp the Indi uh, the Indians used to scalp people. I'm like, your scalp is it's it's bad. Um, you know, and of course, you know, it was it was bleeding. You couldn't really see, but the hair chunks of hair was just coming out. So both of my boys came up from where they sit in the. Um, their offices and they're like geez pop 
and you know we got everything under control and we looked and it looked it just looks like terrible road rash you know he didn't have to go to the hospital or anything like that but it almost looked like he was riding a bicycle and he fell and um just terrible road rash so I, I felt really bad for him. And he had a really busy day yesterday. I'm like, you know, you better take some Tylenol or at least some Advil. Don't fall asleep during the meeting. Um, but yeah, it just, so, you know, at least, you know, he was good last night. We had a, we had a meeting with our accountant at five o'clock. We had to sign our taxes and stuff. And, uh, um, he, he did okay. But, boy, it's, you just never know. All right, I'm just going to add a little bit of gold to this. And you can, you can move on if you want. I know some people like to watch stitching like this. Um, and when I, when I do my, I always take three strands. I can't remember now when I used to do my cross stitch. I can't remember if it was three or two strands. I forget. I think it was three. The other thing I want to show is I saw a gal one day, I think it was Biddy Penny, um, separating her thread and it got all knotted on her. What I do when I have my embroidery thread like this, my DMC, I start it and then I take my finger and I just separate it like this and it doesn't, it's usually pretty good. And then it just separates nicely. Um, if you just try to pull the threads out or to the side, um, that's when it can knot up and it can give you problems. So that's just a little, that's just a little tip. I get my new glasses on Monday, so tomorrow. And um, they're progressives, so I shouldn't have to go between my readers and no no glasses at all. I, you know, I, uh, my doc says he wants me to wear them all the time. But that makes me nervous, too, because I'm wondering if by wearing these glasses all the time, if it's going to make my eyes weaker. And I don't, I don't want to do that either. So, I don't know. We'll see. I just hope that I can get used to them. That's why I got that lace six years ago, because I couldn't get used to glasses. And I think this extra here just adds a nice little bit of texture. And I think that's good. I think that's good like that. Just add just adds enough. Gives gives it some depth. And then, um, let's see, what else, what else? Okay, so we're going to put this aside here, all right? If I can get this off of my... All right, we're going to raise the camera back up. 
I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use that whole piece. So let's get this raised up. And we'll bring our paper back in. Okay, so I think that'll be that'll be good there. Okay. Um, all right, so what's next? Now, I would like to, I'm thinking of taking this, which I will have to redo. And I'd like to, this is on typewriter paper. I didn't have any vellum. I have vellum. I don't know where it is. But I'm thinking of putting the quote right underneath here. Because again, I don't want it so bold in your face. Um, so I'm going to redo this. And I think what I'm going to do is just, because I don't want to have to redo it, redo it. I'm going to try to just type out Ernest Hemingway here, delete this, and then I'll, I'll try to run it through again. If that doesn't work, then I'll just have to run the whole thing. So let me do that and I'll be right back. All right, I ran it out with Ernest Hemingway's um, name on there. And I'd like to, I want to get this down here. Now, um, I believe that that will fit right there perfectly um, because I want to have this up here around here. So I think that will be good. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to cut this down a little. And I'm going to glue this, I'm going to tape this down. Or actually I'm going to glue it down with my uh, art glitter glue. So let's get this glued down, some, or uh, cut down somewhat. And I'm going to put this back over here just to get the positioning correct. Right about there. And then this will slide under. Because I want it on, what I should do is glue it right on this vellum. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that once I get this set because I want to have it right at the edge of that. So we'll go on just like that. And I am going to, I'm going to get my little giraffe here, hold that in place. I'm going to get this here. I'm going to put that right there like that. And I'm just going to put a bead here line here so you can see the art glitter glue it does not this like I said this is typewriter paper but it does not um, show that's the one thing that I do like about the art glitter glue and I think if I think when I use this as well on my vellum it didn't show either. There. Okay. All right, so we have that down there, which is wonderful. And now I can put this on here, okay? And how I'm going to attach this, I'm going to just put, um, 
I have my little We Are Memory Keepers thing here. And I think I'm going to use these dark, I'm going to use these dark brown ones. And I'm going to attach, it's different, my vellum using these. And this is a way, a nice way too, if you make greeting cards, to attach your, if you use vellum, on your cards or outside. This is a nice way to attach your vellum on there as well. So, um, I'm going to take a little, I'm going to take a little dab of glue. And I'm just going to just put a little dab there just so it, it tacks down and I don't lose my positioning here. And just a little bit here. And I'll do the same over here. And here, okay. And I know it's raised a little bit. I don't mind that it's not like right over hugging this here because you can still see it and read it. And it's supposed to be just kind of in the little faded area. Now, if I want to, after I get everything set, I can put four of these again, which might be kind of fun. That would add to the page. I could put four right here as well. All right. And I could add some twine. We'll, we'll see how it, we'll see how it all goes, how it all works out. And the other thing, while I'm, I'm thinking of this, if you have your, I thought of this the other day, and I know Debbie has over at My Vagabond Style, she has a hard time finding her pins. If anybody has a hard time, when you take your pin out and you put it on your desk, you can't find it, get yourself a pink eraser. And what I do a lot of times, I stick my, my um, pin in here and I just set it up on top. That way you don't lose your pin. It's right there. You know where it's at. And it's not rolling around on your desk and you're not you're not panicking okay all right so that's another little tip for you all right so this here I want to put I think I want to put I'm not sure how I want to put it but I want to put my dad's picture up here this one here with the fish I want to put down in this corner all right what I'm going to do first though is I'm going to get these set so I know how much room I have to work with so we're going to do that next and again I'm just going to eyeball it I don't really ever measure anything out um, and I shouldn't have put this down just yet. I need to take this up because I need to do, and of course this is, ah, dang it, art glitter glue, and it sticks pretty good. All right, so we gotta think here. I wanted to do my stenciling underneath here. Um, And I know what I can do. I have I have another piece of this. I have another piece of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll do end up doing a double page, but I'm going to go and pull this pic this out. I'm going to do some stenciling, and then I will put this on here. So let me go grab two more sheets of paper, and we'll go from there. And this is why I buy lots of paper when I find something that I like. Um, 
All right. So we are going to. I don't know if I did that upside down now. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to worry about it. This is just one of these fawful, fawful, awful, fawful days. All right. So I am going to take my stencil. Make sure I got this right and I'm just going to do some stenciling around the sides with this basket weave style piece here okay and yep sometimes things just sometimes things just don't go the way you expect them to go right nobody's fault it's just I guess what what is in store <laughs> all right so see I like that and I'm just going to do this around in some different sections but like I've always said when it comes to scrapbooking or whatever it's about the photos it's nice to have a pretty page and you know do some fun artwork around it but when it comes down to it it's it's all about um, the photo and I really like using I started using more of my stencils and I'm really enjoying that because I just think that they add a little bit more. I'm going to add a little weave down here. I just think they add so much more. Yeah, I like all of these little things here. I'll go right down in this area. And you don't even have to do the whole square. You can just do a little bit here and a little bit there. And just do a little corner like that. And a little corner like that. Okay, so I think that's good. That just adds another little element. Now I can go ahead and I can get my paper down here. So see that? It just adds a little something else to the background. So there's my there's my stenciling that was required um, for the Marguerite's collage. Okay, add this here, a little, little dab. These little, like I said, art glitter glue. Boy, when you use it, you better make sure <laughs> that that's where you want your piece because you could see how it really um, held this vellum down. And I did, did get my quote down, so that's good. All right, now let's move along and get this wrapped up. All right, so let's do our corners. So I guess it is good sometimes to see that, you know, it's... If you make a mistake, you have different, you know, you have the same paper or whatever, it's no big deal. That other page I will use, I'm sure I have more, um, I have more photos of my dad fishing, so I will just use that in a different section of the book, or and if I'm making both of these for you know, one each for my boys. Well, I already have one page pretty much set, and if there's no stenciling, so what? So be it. It's okay.
Okay, all right, now we'll get these in here. I just, I think these um, eyelets just add a nice little touch. I just, I love using these, like I said, either in a greeting card or on my pages or some sort of embellishment. And the other thing that you could do as well is say if you're doing an outdoor scene or um, hiking or something, you could also take twine and you could loop your twine in here or whatever. Now, fishing, if fishing, um, it's not twine, if fish, fish line came in a color, that would be fun to do fish line down the page. All right, so as you can see, that is done there, all right? It's kind of hard to see when I have my camera up so hard. All right, and... Now we are going to, let me just make sure I have all of my pieces here. That, that, that. I kind of like to put that there maybe. Um, I kind of like to rough this up as well. Um, maybe what I will do if I have a an old envelope here. I have some I need one of those little cutter things that you you uh, bring down. I have one I just don't know where it is where you rough up the sides here. And I have no idea where it is, but I would love to rough that up a little bit. Um, let me see if I can find that tool. All right, I can't find it. Of course I can't find it. So I'm just gonna take my scissors here and I'm just gonna rough, rough up the sides here. And it basically will do the same thing. I just want to give a an older edge around this. Because this is a these are vintage photos, so that fancy tool that I had, I don't really don't need, right? There. So I think this will definitely be This will definitely be better. It's little, it's more roughed up. It's, if I could just even get some other little tears in here. Just make it look old and more crinkly. That would be really good. All right, so yeah, you can see where it's just a little more ripped and torn and it's got these little ripped edges here so that's that's good that's the look I was trying to achieve I could do more but and then I thought I'd put that there and what I'm going to do is I want to do these as well so I'm going to just step aside do and rough these up just like I did the bigger one. So as you can see, these are roughed up somewhat too. So that's that's better. Okay. 
All right, so I'm thinking about possibly that, um, but this is where I got my my flower. So I would really like to put this on here and then have my dad's the fishing photo up here, something like this. Right here. Maybe something like this. And then I would just cut this here. See, a lot of this stuff I could have done. I mean, if I had this really planned out really, really well, I could have done this all off camera. But half of the time, when I start something like this and I don't have a set plan, it just makes it kind of hard to, you know, plan, plan something out. So I kind of like that there, like that. Here. That. And then for my, um, I have to still have that part of a produ uh, product manual or instruction. I think I'm going to put, I'm going to take this bait casting off because I believe that's what my father is doing in that photo. He's bait casting. And I am just tearing this down here off to the side. I can't get my left and right today uh, working. And I think maybe what I can do with this is I can just turn this up and just make this tattered like this without really that and I'm going to take a little bit more off of this side. I have to be careful because it is this is old paper. Take it off there and then I can put that there like that. So I think I'm going to go with that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around this here. But I first I want to, I'm not going to get this glued down just yet. I'm going to get this stitched on and then we will put everything down. So this is all stitched and I did a nice little wonky stitch on the end here. So we're going to put that up there and I have my dad's picture here which I like with that stitching around there. So let's get this down and I'm going to use my tape runner. I don't really want to use glue on the back of this photo. So we'll get this down. All right. Get that down right on there. This I might as well get down as well. So if you are still sticking around here, thank you. I just want to um, show you that sometimes, you know, you can see how things change when you think you have an idea and then you want to do this or you want to do that. Um, I still would like to use a little bit of this. Maybe I can put I can put this here on on that. And I kind of like the little check marks, the little check boxes on that. So let's let's at least get this down. Now I'm going to 
glue this down here and I think I am going to have to use some glue up on the top here because of the fabric and I think this will be just fine. I don't think I need to use Fabri-Tac or anything like that. So let's get this right about here. I think that'll be good. Offset that a little bit. All right, so this is down. Okay, all right, so that is there. And then the next thing we are going to do is this bait casting. And I don't know if I, maybe I should just put that on there. And then I could incorporate this a little bit with this picture here. I do like that I could do a little strip or something but I'm going to leave this like this and I want this folded over so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here and just put that down like that because I like how that is crumpled and old in the same with this here right there I'm not going to because I can't um, distress, put any distress ink on this. It's very, very old paper. And if I try to put distress ink, distress ink over it, it would just really fall apart. So we're putting the bait casting here, which I think is awesome. I really like that. I like that a lot. And then down below here, we have our saying. And then we have this here. And I want to incorporate um, this card a little bit because it does ask for a um, ledger paper. And this is like a ledger card. So I'm thinking... And I like this little bit of stenciling back here. I really, I really like this. These little pieces coming up. Um, get my picture right side, right sided up. Um, maybe what I can do is I can rip. can tear a little bit of this here. Although I like that. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll take a little bit of this. Take that off. I'd like to incorporate that little tiny bit of Ah, I could make it where it's just a little tab coming off of that there. But it would be nice to put this on here where it's the work, it's, you know... Um, you know, kind of like fishing, a day off from fishing. Let me just I could ink that up a little bit.
and that might be kind of fun just to have that peeking out there. I like that. And then I could just stamp the year on here. I'm going to do that. I could stamp the year on there that this was taken of my dad when he was out in Washington State. Whoops. Trying to make an old folder. folder. Old photo older, aren't I? So let's get this on here. And then that way, if I need to change it a little bit, I can. I think that's good. Okay. And we will put this right down here in this corner. Right like that. I'm going to line it up. There. All right, so I think I have everything. I think I have everything, and then I'm going to go back and look at, do my research. I will stamp on here the date. So I think... I think that is it. So that's the, yeah, I like that. And I like where I ripped, used the scissors on the images. Yeah, I like that. So I think that, I think that's another really great page for my dad's, my scrapbooking um, album for him. So let's go over the prompts again. Uh, a repeating uh, font. A repeating pattern found in nature. It's the fish in the backdrop, the, the scales and the colors of the fish. My ledger paper is a ledger card here. Uh, part of a product manual or instruction guide. I took that from my fishing manual, the bait casting. Uh, thread or piece of fabric. I have my thread. I have my thread here where I, I stitched around it, did the French knots and my fabric. I did my quote. Uh, my Ernest Hemingway quote, and then something stenciled, um, which is the backdrop. So as long as this video was, I, I apologize um, again, but that's how I work during the day. That's why sometimes I don't get a lot of pages done. I'm very particular as to how and what I use. But I think this was a fun um, idea to make a scrapbooking page from the Marguerite Miller um prompts and so I guess you know that's another tip that if you want to make a scrapbooking page and you're not quite sure what to do what to gather look at her prompts um, see if you can incorporate or other people's prompts uh, you know the 50 stack challenge um, there's so many things out there that you can do um, you know just let your imagination run wild. So I want to thank everyone for joining in today. I really appreciate it. Um, I got to let you go. This was a long video, and again, I apologize for it. But I think it's a really pretty page, and I hope I gave you a lot of different ideas um, and incentives to create really pretty pages and to get those photos out and get them into an album. All right, everybody. Have a great day, and have a really blessed week. Bye-bye.